Eddie Gabor is with us, owner at Key Advisors. So what are we thinking of 25, 50, inflation still running hot? Good to see you, Eddie. Um, you know, we have weakness here this Tuesday morning, kicking off a new week. Where do you stand? So we've stayed pretty pat with our position that we are not done with this bear market yet. We do think we're going to hit new lows before we get new highs. And it's really just a function of the economic cycle. Uh, I think you have to, if you take a step back and really look at things prudently here in our humble opinion, earnings are probably going to get worse, not better, because inflation is sticky. It's going to stay sticky. And that means the consumer is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker, in our opinion. Um, and so we don't expect to see any acceleration on the earnings side um, and expect GDP and earnings over the next six months, again, to weaken. Uh, because, look, I mean, you have to fact check me on this, but I don't think there's ever been a time period in history where a bear market has ended while the Fed is in a tightening cycle. And they're going to raise rates two, maybe three, maybe four times. Who knows? Let's see what this inflation data continues to do. But uh, last week kind of put the nail in the coffin on that pivot case of cutting rates this year. Uh, they're not going to do it. Uh, and if anything, they're probably going to raise rates more than the market had priced in. Well, that's the whole thing, because I think people were really thinking 25 basis points now in March, finished. That does not seem to be the case. I mean, what are some of the more likely scenarios now? So I think best case scenario uh, from a market standpoint is they only raise rates two more times. Uh, and we're going to have to let more data come in. But I mean, I think it's realistic that they're going to probably raise rates three times, so at least 75 more basis points from here. Uh, and look, we haven't even seen the impact of all the tightening they've done yet. That's going to take months to come in. So with the amount of corporate debt that's got to get refinanced, commercial loans with commercial real estate, it's going to have to get refinanced this year with rates increasing as fast as they have, I find that's going to be very, very challenging. Uh, so we're just playing it extremely cautious still. It's hard to stay patient during a bear market rally, uh, but it had all the characteristics of one. And we'll have to see if there's follow through towards the end of the day today and going into the rest of this week. Uh, but we're still pretty bearish here uh, in the near term. Right, understood. And at this point, when people are talking about what kind of landing we may see, you know, you're starting to think that the soft landing, that chance is, is beginning to dwindle. I had another guest on today who still believes that's very possible, given the light that we've seen the jobs picture, it's such a tight market for jobs. We've never been in the soft landing camp. I don't think it's probable that we see one. I would love to see one, of course, because it's the best thing for this country. But a tight labor market means the Fed just keeps tightening more. And the last thing that the market and economy wants to see is monetary policy getting tighter and tighter while the economy's slowing down. And that's why the Fed's in a lose-lose position here, uh, because labor market's going to stay tight. And that's not a bullish thing. That is hawkish uh, from a Fed perspective, which again means that it's going to be some deterioration on risk assets um, and starts to eliminate that Fed put that everyone's been so conditioned to believe will be here to save the day. Uh, and I don't think they're going to be able to this time. What's your takeaway from what you're seeing in earnings so far? I mean, this week now you can really focus on Walmart and Home Depot because we just got those, but we're pretty much through a majority of earnings season. The big takeaway is any business, in our opinion, that's tied to the consumer spending, which is a lot of businesses, is showing weakness. Um, company after company. You talk to small businesses on Main Street, they'll tell you the same thing, that the cost of running their business is staying high. This whole talk about inflation coming down and helping people, uh, I beg to differ because when you talk to business owners, labor cost, which is one of their biggest costs, is staying extremely high, and they're seeing demand go down. And that's a, you know, that's not the scenario that you want to see when you're running a business. So uh, again, I don't see that environment changing, unfortunately, in the next six months and making some miraculous turnaround. So uh, I believe that you should can, you should believe that because of that, that earnings will just get weaker and. Profits will, will start to continue to shrink over the next several months. And when, do, when is there a turnaround? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? I mean, when do you see where you might start to put some more risk on the table? 
So we think one of two things you have to see. You got to see the Fed stop tightening one before you can be comfortable in trying to even come close to predicting a bottom. And then you need to see the rate of change of the economy stop getting worse. It doesn't have to get better, but just stabilize. Uh, and right now, we're just seeing the beginnings of layoffs. We're starting to see the beginnings of the weakness, uh, which is why we still think we're, we're early stages here. Um, now, look, if we get down to 3,500, uh, again, which we think we will get below there, we'll probably start dollar cost averaging some client assets in because we're sitting on a large cash position. So fortunately, we feel like we're in a position of strength because of how we're positioned, because you'll never pick the exact bottom. But I will say the light at the end of the tunnel, we do think that the bottom will be in this year. And when you, you can make your most money, in our opinion, potentially when you have a recession and cash, so you can buy those things. And that's what we think is gonna play out this year. And what about corporate debt? I know you are um, one of your biggest concerns is credit. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, look, it's no secret. We have massive amount of debt on the corporate and individual side. And when you double rates, interest rates, or triple them in less than 12 months, I don't know how you can't expect something bad to happen in certain sectors. So my biggest concern is a company that's barely making it has to refinance their debt uh, if they're even able to get capital. And if they are, how are they going to be able to afford the cash flow? Uh, and again, that's why we continue to be very cautious, because we haven't even seen that materialize yet. We know the debt is out there. We know it has to get refinanced, and we know the refinance rate's going to be a lot higher than where they were. Uh, so again, it's an unfortunate situation that we're in, uh, but we think we're going to be having a recession this year that's probably already started. Um, and we're going to have these headwinds of all of this debt getting refinanced at one of the worst times you could expect it. So year to date, we're up 4% on the S&P. End of the year, quickly, do we stay here or we go negative or what? Uh, we think we're going to hit new lows before we get new highs. Uh, and the sooner we get there, the faster we have a chance of recovery. Uh, you know, I think uh, rip the Band-Aid off and let's just get it over with versus just stretching it out and making it last even longer. So too early to tell where we finish the year, but uh, we have a pretty strong conviction on where we're heading here in the next few months. Got it. Thank you so much. Eddie Gabor, always nice to thank see you. you. Even thank in you. a tough day. Kevin, a, a key advisors. Thank you.